Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So far, we have explored a few pieces of CGI. We have explored text, images, stacks, and recently, list. However, there's a lot more to cover. But before continue, let's think about why this is possible. This magic, how we are creating the, this fantastic views with just a few piece of code. Well, in this video, we're gonna explore a magical piece of CGI that is possible to create or custom views inside our body. And this is actually one of the tips of this channel, the usage of view builder. My name is Pete and this, this is Ethan Tips. All right, cool. So before actually showing you the tip for today, I wanted to step back for a little bit and remember you the last episode when we create a list with some Mavimos and we create also a navigation link to send the user to a destination view, right? When we touch one of the Amiibos in the, in the list. All right, so the thing is, is this. What happens if we want to send the user to different destinations depending on the information we, are, we have? So if we go back here to this implementation, I created a struct called Amiibo that is uh, conforming the identifiable uh, protocol. What is this saying is that every the stroke item will have an own and unique ID, right? With UUID, right? This is useful because uh, if we go back to the list, remember last episode we tried to use uh, an ID, right? And we use a keypad to enable self, right? That was because we were using a string. But in this case, since that we identify every element has with a unique ID, there's no necessary. Uh, doing that and list can identify every item by itself, right? Uh, the other important thing is here the game series, right? So we are identifying every every image here related to a game. For example, all the links uh, uh, images are related to Zelda, the Koopas, etc. Are related to Mario, Samus is of course Metroid, and etc. Others. So the point here is that. And for every game series, I want to, well, or for some, uh, for Mario and Zelda in this case, I want to display specific destinations for that specific case. So, in what I'm saying is that, for example, for this link, I want to display something different uh, related to Samus or related to, to Koopa in this case. So, for that, we have created different kind of destinations, different kind of detail views, right? So for the general one, it's just a, it's pretty basic, right? Just uh, a white background with the image and the name. For Mario, we have something uh, a bit more uh, different uh, with a black background and the title in the top location. And for Zelda series, we have uh, this other background and a different uh, font type for this element. So, we have what we want is replace this image that is always showing the same destination into something that could be selected depending on the data. So, let's do it. All right. So, one of the things that we can do is actually saying, okay. Um, Let's do uh, um, um, and return a view for this method, okay? But there is our first error here, which is this one. This error is, is so common in the Swift development, and just a few developers actually understand it, but it's very simple. What is telling us is that this purple, remember, view, 
it's actually a protocol, right? So this protocol specifically is a generic protocol. We're going to talk about that uh, and generics in a later video. But what is telling us is that we cannot do that, right? Because this is, uh, in short words, view is a generic, right? So there's no there's no enough information for the compiler to identify what's going on. What 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 the hell with this uh, uh, protocol? You need to use a specific concrete protocols or um, or concrete types for this case. So it's not possible to do this. So how we solve this? So for this exists the sum keyword. Oops. And this type is converted into opac type. What is opac type? Uh, if it's something, it's something unique from Swift. But opac type is basically uh, telling us that, uh, or actually allow us to uh, use generic protocols as return values. Mm, we want to explore opac type in a later video, but for now, just keep that in mind. It's just mm, allowing us to convert or return uh, generic protocols in, in a function. Okay, cool. So let proceed. So what we want to do is uh, add in an amiibo as a parameter and replace the destination. All right, let's test. Everything is still working, cool. Now, by the way, you may say, uh, why we were not using a return keyword here? Well, it's because uh, when functions return a value and we have only one sentence, that sentence is inferred that returned by the compiler. So in other words, you can do this, but you can omit it in this case because it's just one line. Okay, so now let's replace this for a switch, right? And we're gonna use game series. So for the case of Metroid and others, what we want to return is return amiibo, amiibo video, okay? For the case of Mario, we want Mario video. And for Zelda, um, Zelda. Cool. Let's compile this. And we are having an issue. What the? Well, actually, it's it's expected because one of the requirements for opac types is that uh, opac return types is that all the all the types related should match itself, right? So what it's telling us is that we cannot return multiple values for this case, right? Um, okay, so what can we do? Well, one of the techniques uh, commonly used is this one. Uh, basically doing a casting to any view for every view that we want to return. All right, this solved our issue, but there are some uh, concerns about it. One is that for every every time we want to add a new, a new destination here, we will have to wrap the destination with any view, which is uh, not so convenient. And the second one is that we are actually applying a type erasing to every return type. What is that doing is that, um, well, we are hiding some kind of information related to uh, the concrete view we want, we're sent. We want to talk also later about type erasing because it's a long term, about a long topic. But for now, it's um, something that, uh, okay, it's not looking good. Is there a way to do it better? Absolutely, and this is the tip for this video. Using View Builder. The usage of View Builder is so simple. It's a proper wrapper, right? That you could decorate at the beginning of your function. 
And in fact, you could remove this immediately. You don't need this anymore. So, for this case, you don't need actually the return type and the return keyword anymore. Why? Because View Builder is inferring that the function itself is, like the name is telling us, is building, is creating a view. Inside of this logic, a view is created. So, it's the same case like body. If you can see here, we are not using any return keyword here because in fact, if you go back to the definition of view, you can see that this protocol view is actually a generic protocol, right? Because we have an associated type body here. And uh, what body is, the, the definition of body is having actually a view builder. So in fact, body is using under the hood view builder. That's why you can use this kind of, of implementation without return type and without issues because you have some view as a requirement. In this case, it's basically, you can see it as basically creating a custom body uh, computer property, but in this case, it's a function, so it's great. Finally, I would like to just mention, okay, uh, it's cool, but is that is so magic or how does it work? Well, mm, it, it's complex to, to really know what is inside of the implementation, but what um, the documentation tell, uh, tell us about is that it's actually applying a build pattern. What it's telling us is that it's converting this logic into actually a builder like this. So let's imagine this, uh, this kind of implementation when we have this. I mean, I'm not saying that this is actually the, the implementation of UBuilder, but it's, uh, in fact, something so close to this. Um, imagine that we, if we didn't have this build builder, what we actually had to do is something like this, uh, creating a builder object and then uh, adding all the subviews to this builder and then combining them into a build method. But it's just an example. So it's time to test or work here. This way. Cool. So let's see how much. Okay, it's having the default screen. And let's see here. Excellent. What about Koopa? Great. Pretty nice. There you have it. ViewBuilder is a powerful and great tool to build your custom applications in CFUI. Use it properly when you require multiple and complex decision about what is the correct view to show. However, we have explored only static views so far. Mm, I think it's time to start actually doing applications that actually interact with the user. So stay tuned because in the next video we're going to explore the state management. Thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter at Swift and Tips. Thank you so much and have a great day. With all the components of CPI, I'm oh,